Hello friends. In this session, we are looking at the concept of internal and external balance. Internal balance refers to full employment along with the stable level of prices, while external balance implies equilibrium in balance of payment. We will analyze how a country can attain both internal and external balance and we'll see the swan model which diagrammatically show the attainment of internal and external balance welcome to the video in our earlier session on international monetary system we have seen that during the period of mid 1940s to 1971 the international monetary system was basically following a fixed exchange rate system. We call the period as the Bretton Woods period in which the world currencies were pegged with that of the US dollar. A US dollar was the intervention currency. During this period, the principal goal of the countries were one was that of achieving full employment for the labor force along with the stable level of prices, which is termed as the internal balance. But expanding output and employment in an open economy will obviously have implication for the balance of payment. As the authorities have agreed to maintain a fixed exchange system, they are also interested in running an equilibrium in balance of payment, that is, balance in the demand and supply of their currencies. This is termed as the external balance. Thus, internal balance refers to full employment for the labor force along with the price stability, while external balance implies equilibrium in the balance of payment. To achieve this objective of internal and external balance, the countries have basically three policy instruments, namely the expenditure changing or demand policies, the expenditure switching policies and direct control. Now let us examine what are the implications of these three policies. Expenditure changing policies include the fiscal and monetary policy. It refers to the changes in the fiscal and monetary policy with the aim to influence the level of aggregate demand in the economy. That is why this policy is also known as the demand policy. An expansionary fiscal policy and an easy monetary policy will lead to an increase in the aggregate demand. Similarly, a contractionary fiscal policy and a tight monetary policy will lead to a reduction in the aggregate demand in the economy. So it will lead to a change in the aggregate demand or expenditure. That is why fiscal and monetary policy are termed as expenditure changing policy. Now, expenditure switching policies refers to the changes in the exchange rate. That is, it refers to the policies of devaluation and revaluation, which are implemented to attempt and to influence the composition of spending between domestic and foreign goods. Now, a devaluation switches expenditure from foreign to domestic goods. That is, we know that as a result of devaluation, our imports become expensive, our exports become cheaper. That is, as a result of devaluation, there is a switching of expenditure from the foreign commodities or foreign goods to domestic goods and devaluation is usually used to correct a deficit in the country's balance of payment. On the other hand, revaluation switches expenditure from domestic to the foreign goods and it is used to correct country's surplus in its balance of payment. Following to the third policy instrument, which is the direct control, it refers to the tariff quotas and other restrictions of international trade. Basically, these policies are expenditure switching policies and can be used with for the specific balance of payment purposes or items. And direct controls can also be in the form of price and wage controls and can be used to control domestic inflation when other policies of the government fails. 
so we have the objectives as well as policies now we are shifting our focus to the swan diagram and swan diagram or swan model examines how a country can simultaneously attain internal and external balance with the two policies we will be only looking at the expenditure changing as well as expenditure switching policies it was conceptualized by the australian economist trevor swan and the model is based on certain simplifying assumption it assumes that there is in zero international capital flow so that balance of payment equals country's trade balance it also assumes that international trade is free and prices remain constant until the full employment is reached moving to the swan diagram in the two axes the horizontal axis shows domestic absorption which represent the consumption investment as well as government expenditure a movement towards the right away from the origin implies an expansionary fiscal policy and or an easy monetary policy the vertical axis shows exchange rate and a depreciation is a movement away from the origin a movement towards the origin means an appreciation of the currency now let us analyze the derivation of the internal balance as well as external balance and we will start from the internal balance curve internal balance curve shows the combination of real exchange rate and domestic absorption in which the economy or the country find itself in internal balance that is full employment along with the stable level of prices the ib curve is a downward sloping curve from left to the right this is because a fall in the exchange rate that is an appreciation will reduce the export and increase import therefore to maintain full employment it is necessary to have an increase in domestic expenditure or absorption that is why the ib curve must be negatively sloped that is a depreciation should be matched by an increase in domestic absorption there needs to be an inverse relationship between the variables measured in horizontal and vertical axis that is why the ib curve is a downward sloping curve to the right of ib curve there are inflationary pressures and to the left of ib curve there is unemployment now let us analyze the external balance curve or eb curve which shows the combination of real exchange rate and domestic absorption in which the country find itself in external balance that is there is equilibrium in the balance of payment or the current account because the model assumes that current account equals the balance of payment because of the zero capital flow eb curve is an upward sloping curve from left to the right this is because an increase in exchange rate that is a depreciation will increase export and reduce import so to prevent the current account moving towards a surplus it requires that there must be an increase in domestic expenditure to increase or to induce imports to rise sufficiently to keep the country's trade balance and in an equilibrium position points above and to the left of the eb curve there is balance of payment surplus and while points to the right of the eb curve there is balance of payment deficit all the points on the eb curve shows equilibrium in current account or balance of payment now we will superimpose these two curves and will draw the swan diagram so this is the swan diagram and there is an intersection of internal balance as well as external balance curve at the point e in which there is simultaneous attainment of internal and external balance you can see that the swan diagram divide the entire economy into four zones showing different possible states for the economy at zone 1 there is external surplus along with the internal inflation at zone 2 we have external deficit and internal inflation at zone 3 we have external deficit and internal unemployment and finally at zone 4 we have external surplus and internal unemployment 
only at point E where IB and EB curves intersect is the economy find itself in internal and external equilibrium. Now let us analyze certain possibilities. Suppose that the country find itself at say point A. From here if the country wants to move towards external balance, it must do a devaluation or there must be a depreciation of the currency. It will take the country upwards towards point C. But depreciating the currency or devaluation takes the economy to further inflationary pressures. That is, it is far away from the internal balance curve. On the other hand, if the economy try to reduce expenditure and follow a contractionary fiscal and tight monetary policy, it can move towards point B on the external balance curve. Even though it, it will have the external balance, that is equilibrium in balance of payment, there will be unemployment in the economy. So, this one policy instrument, either in the form of fiscal expansion or devaluation, to achieve the two targets are unlikely to be successful. So if the country wants to move from point A to point E, the authorities need to deflate the economy as well as undertake devaluation by appropriate amount. That will be the focus of our next topic which is the assignment problem. Assignment problem basically refers to which instrument should be assigned to attain a specific target. Now we have two targets to attain internal and external balance and we have two policies namely the fiscal policy and exchange rate policy and in this SWAN model the assignment problem is solved like that it recommends to use the exchange rate policy to achieve the external balance and fiscal policy to achieve the internal balance whether this assignment will be correct or not it depends upon the relative impact of the two instruments to achieve these two targets. Now let us examine what will happen. Suppose that the country find itself at point A where there is deficit as well as unemployment and it desired to attain external balance. The appropriate depreciation or devaluation will move the economy or country vertical towards the EB curve. Now, the country is having external balance, but there is still unemployment. A fiscal expansion will move country towards the right until it reaches the IB curve or the internal balance curve. Now, the country have internal balance, but it already lost its external balance. That is, the internal balance are achieved at the expense of balance of payment deficit. Now, a further depreciation will move the country vertically upwards towards the EB curve. And it must be followed by a fiscal contraction to get back to the IB curve. In essence, a repeated use of these two instruments are needed it, and it will eventually bring the economy towards point E, which is the simultaneous attainment of internal and external balance. We can see that the movements are convergent in nature, that is, when there is correct assignment, that is, exchange rate policy is assigned to attain external balance and fiscal policy is assigned to attain internal balance, the movement will be convergent. If the assignment is wrong, the movement will be divergent and economy will move away from the point E. This is the assignment problem in the Swan model. Thus, the assignment problem in the Swan model is being solved by assigning fiscal policy for the attainment of internal balance and exchange rate policy for the attainment of external balance. But these views are later challenged when Mundell Fleming model was introduced, which will be the theme of our next presentation. Hope that this video is useful to you. You can always visit our blog www.skpeco.blogspot.it for additional study materials. Until we meet next time, Stay safe. Happy learning. Thank you.